good morning, everyone. And uh, we're going to continue this study dealing with Judges 9, which has become pretty detailed. Uh, but uh, before we begin, can we open with a word of prayer? <laughs> Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for all your blessings. And we just ask for your presence here as we open your word. As we look at these things that we've been looking at over the last while, um, and that we feel that uh, you have been leading, that you've been bringing these things together, and making the picture clearer. And we just ask, Lord, that you can forgive us for our sins, our lack of understanding, our lack of diligence and study. Um, but we are so thankful that you have still been merciful to us and have allowed us to see things in your word. May your Holy Spirit speak to each heart and mind as we open your word together. We pray this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So yesterday, um, we had, um, well, we had started looking into the downfall of Abimelech. And, but just to sort of review here. So the thing that became clear to me that we had struggled with is we know that, um, that this, uh, the book of Judges is speaking to this movement regarding the history of this movement from 2001 to 2023. And um, we could see this not just in the symbols, well, I guess the thing that, showed that first was the symbols in the uh, the chapters and verses in chapter two. Though we've seen that same uh, analysis as we've looked at different uh, chapters and verses. So for instance, is Judge 9 verse 20 and 921, we take as referring to the 20th day of the ninth month and the 21st day of the ninth month, which in 2021 is uh, December 25th and December 26th. So, um, and this would uh, relate to uh, this curse, the fire that will come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem. And so we discussed what the men of Shechem represented. Um, and, and so we were kind of dealing with that a little bit as we were looking at the downfall of Abimelech as well, because that's obviously where uh, we would see this. And, and then Jotham running away and fleeing to Beer would refer to the beginning of this study, the understanding of the lines that began on December 26, 2021. And um, so Jotham is, of course, a message. And, uh, um, you know, it obviously people can be related to a message, but these are primarily symbolizing messages. So when we get this fire that comes out from Abimelech in verse 20 in this curse that Jotham gives, and Jotham, of course, represents the 70th week, which points to April 5th, 2030. And then we say, it says, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech. So this is between this message and the men of Shechem. And we were trying to address this at the end of the study yesterday. Um, but, you know, we were kind of in the midst of a study. We just kind of dropped it. Um, so just to, I'm just going to pick up the text here on this video so that I can see exactly what we were discussing. Uh, anybody remember sort of what, what, what was the, the, the points that were being particularly discussed? Or do you not remember? I know it's hard. I can't remember even uh, exactly what the point was. Um, oh, yeah, we were looking at this. Um, we actually had gone back to uh, Stephen's study, to the charts there, just before we finished. So that related to, so we, we want to look at those charts again. And... And the, and the reason why we went to those charts, does anybody remember why we went to Stephen's charts? What was, because Dwight had brought up something about the charts. 
And, and he did send an email regarding that as well. There's a lot of data within the chart that gives us some very firm evidence of the validity of the 2520, but also on multiple points about Rome establishing the vision. Okay. Now, our situation here, <clears throat> as we're looking at these situations in judges, there is a lot of information that we have been addressing, and we're going to have to be able to put this onto a line. The thing that, that has impressed me and, and that has been brought to my mind is Stephen's chart that we were addressing yesterday. Mm -hmm. While there is a lot of information on it, we can actually break it down and may be able to break it down in, in a manner that's going to allow us to see how we can break down much of this information that we're seeing out of the book of Judges. Right. And and so um, I'm just going to bring up the one chart here. So I mean, part of this came from a Rome establishing the vision. That's what we were discussing. Right. Okay. Um, and, and that's, I think, partly why we went to Stephen's chart, because it... it um, related to what our discussion was now um, because this had to do with Parminder's movement that that was the one thing they set aside right right so so when we go to um, uh, so Angel puts the prediction of civil war in judges 920 yeah so but this would be an internal war more than anything within this movement but anyway um, so when we look at this chart, so you had brought up some points, uh, that need to be added to this chart. Well, let's, let's put it this way. If we were to take this chart yeah, and we were to disassemble the chart, yes, we would be able to place four, maybe five very key points using the the baseline structure of the chart going from 457 to 34 right we would be able to place two periods of 126 years we would be able to place two way marks each of 91 years we would still have the main structure here of the 490 years and yet be able to show all of the validity for the studies that we've been doing regarding the 2520 and the interrelation with all of these other prophetic time periods. Now, the reason that that we were talking yesterday, the midpoint of 191 BC. Yeah. Is in history, the year that Rome defeated Greece at Thermopylae. And Stephen is, is really correct when he's looking at this with 65 BC with Rome conquering the east of Syria, the pleasant land, Judea in 63, and the south of Egypt. And the main reason that, that I look at this, of course, is that when you're looking at 63, we're talking about the a point where Rome is really establishing its its overall dominance within the world. And then it's concluded with how it's going to take over the king of the south in 31. Mm -hmm. Now, 
as we were looking at this yesterday and from the email that I that you referenced, here we are in 408 BC. Mm -hmm. 91 years later, and 91 can be represented in, in a couple of ways. Actually, it can be represented in three ways that have reference to, to our what we're doing. 91 is 13 times 7. Mm -hmm. Which is the reverse of 31 times 7. So 91 relates to the 217. Correct. That's... Now that 91 year period brings us to 317 BC. In 317 BC, Ptolemy the first Soter, and Soter meaning savior, marries Berenice, who was lady in waiting to Ptolemy the first's one of his wives at that time. But it is through Berenice that the Ptolemaic dynasty begins. Now, that 91 year period is important because 126 years after the 91 year period where that begins with Ptolemy the first marrying Berenice, you have the midpoint of 191 BC. Yeah. So there's just the two years between there, right? Two years. Well, no, two years between the 91, because you're counting 91 from 408, right? Correct. And then there's two years, and then you start the 126. Well, if you, if, you take, if you take the, the, if you take 41, you take 91 away from it. No, never, never mind. I, I don't know what I did wrong. Okay. Some reason, oh, I see what I did wrong. I just typed in the wrong number. Okay, right. So the 91 and the 126 together are 217. Okay. So okay. you what you've got from here, you have this 126-year period after the establishment of the Ptolemaic dynasty yeah. that comes to the end of Greece being the super dominant nation in the world. Right. So, so 191 BC marks the end of that with the Battle of Thermopylae. Right. Now, 126 years after 191 brings us, of course, to 65 BC. Yeah. The first Where the three that need to be conquered, the three geographical. It's, it's the beginning of those three that need to be conquered, right. But what's what, what intrigued me about that, if you go 91 years from 65 BC, you wind up coming to 27 AD. Right, yeah, because that's going to be the other 217, so... From the midpoint 191 BC of 217 years on either side of that, going from 408 to 2780, right? So, so in looking at this in the detail, not only do we have this with 91, and okay, 91 is 13 times seven. Yeah. 91 is, if, if we use one of the symbols that Elder Jeff had noted, we have 81 plus 10 to make 91. So you have the symbol of midnight that he's addressed many times, plus the symbol of a test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, 91 first shows up in connection with... Uh that I know of in the Bible is in how old Jacob is when Joseph is born. Exactly. It's also the number of years from uh, the anointing of Saul to the completion of the temple by Solomon. So there's 91 years because it begins in his 
the fourth year of Solomon, which is, and the other thing is we always have this 84. So, um, so, um, uh, so you have this seven years. So, cause remember in the story of Jacob, he's 84. What after working for a period of seven years, he marries Rachel and Leah when he's 84. And then seven years later, Joseph is born. Right. And Solomon begins 84 years from the anointing of Saul to lay the foundation of the temple. And then seven years later, it's completed. So that's 91 years. So you have this, this 12 times um, seven connected to this 13 times seven. Exactly. Right. So, so this shows up there. And, and there's other places as well where 91 shows up. But those are the two primary ones. And so now we have here the 91 years as a symbol. Uh, no, the, the other th the other thing about um, that you may not uh, recognize is this period of the 49 years. Yes. So just to kind of add to that. So this period of 49 years, there's going to be um, in... Uh, uh, let me see how's this go. So in it's going to be 13 years until the story of Nehemiah, right? Okay, right. So because that's going to be in 444. And um, so you're going to have 13, those 13 years there in that period of seven weeks. That, that becomes this natural division of, of that period of time. Does that make sense? What I'm saying. So you have the number 13 there at the beginning. Right. 457 BC to four, uh, 444 BC. And that's in the period of seven weeks. So you have the, the period of that 49 weeks with this division of 13 and 36. Um, right. 36 being six times six and then 13 being the symbol of rebellion. But that happens there at the beginning of that 40 that first seven weeks so you have the 13 and the seven there as well that's all i'm saying well the, the other thing that i had looked at especially going back to both the 1843 and the 1850 charts this with 91 you can also achieve by adding 45 and 46 together yeah so 45 and 46 and 91 yeah well, Stephen has a note there. Um, so the beginning of the 70 or 70 times seven years of the seven times of Leviticus 26 covers from 677 BC to 586 BC, 91 years. Yes. So that was the other 91s that I was mentioning. Right. These 91s occur in connection with uh, these, these structures of the the seven times right so so they occur in the seven times and uh it, it occurs twice in there um as part of that whole structure of the three uh four nineties so when you put all these together that number shows up again so uh you also have from 607 um which is when daniel's taken captive to uh 516 BC under uh, the second decree, that is Darius's decree, is 91 years. So, so that's what I'm saying. There's these other periods of 91 years that relate to the seven times themselves, which, which comes first from that story of Joseph. Right. Yeah. So, within this, within the presentation of this chart. We have a very incontrovertible presentation mm -hmm. as to the validity of the seven times, the 2520, the validity of multiple prophetic presentations and waymarks. Mm -hmm. And all of this within a period that even these supposedly great theologians 
cannot set aside. Because if you try to set anything of this aside, you're setting aside the sacrifice of Christ. And the moment you're doing that, you're way out in the weeds. Now, now, so this relates, of course, to what we see in Judges here with the death of the 70 sons of Gideon. Exactly. And we know that that relates to the 70 weeks. And Jotham, of course, is the 70th week, the week of Christ. Right. And, and so the fact that, you know, Stephen brings this up here at this time. So, so that was um, yesterday that he presented this, which was uh, uh, the 23rd of November, right? Right. That's when he presents this. Now, um, this whole week, of course, is four years ago. Um, Heidi and I were in um, Arkansas. So it was in this week, the Thanksgiving weekend, that we had made this Thanksgiving prediction, which I you know, put in, in quotation marks there. So we had, we had looked at uh, the visions of Ellen White regarding the Civil War. So we were directed to that. Ellen, um, Ellen White had had these visions that were connected. And, and the one that Heidi had noticed particularly was the one related to uh, July 21st. So that was the Battle of... Um, Plattsburgh? No. No. Um, well, it's also called the Battle of Bull Run, but it has the other name too, the first Battle of Bull Run. Um, Manassas. Manassas? Yeah, the Battle of Manassas. And of course, one of the things about the Battle of Manassas is Manassas is just a Greek form of Manasseh, right? So, I mean, that relates to the seven times as well. But it's the Battle of Manassas. So she had this vision regarding that battle, which occurred on July 21st. So we had made this prediction regarding um, time. Could we predict events? And so, you know, this whole thing of what this movement has been caught in um, started with Parminder, with his time setting. Now, one of the arguments I way, made way back then is that um, that the movement was caught in this, this time element, right? That we didn't choose to do time setting, right? It wasn't, it wasn't something that we were seeking to do. Jeff was opposed to time setting. I've, I've always been opposed to time setting, still am, though I recognize and I recognized there in 2018 that we were caught in this, that it was something that that had been uh, as the result of Parminder, right? Because what he had initiated back in 2012 with his prediction regarding 2014. And even before I understood that Parminder was um, uh, in error regarding what he was doing, that is when he brought up time again, with that we needed to be time setting even before i really understood all of his arguments i understood that this was just something that happened to us because of his prediction if that makes sense that the time was given into this movement to expose parminder is eventually what i found out because it was it was the time the chronology that allowed me to see at least me personally um, that Parminder was an error. And so, so we're caught in this, this quite complex um, structure of time. But that's the whole thing, that the whole point of it is that God is using um, this to correct the movement. And if we, if we don't understand the corrections that are being made, we, we are still caught in the era of Parminder, right? So the whole purpose of this is not for us to set dates for some event. But what I'm saying is that this week is, in a sense, an anniversary. That is, four years on um, is, is a cycle of uh, that occurs in the Julian and the Gregorian calendar of a leap year cycle, right? So 1,461 days is... Uh, four years, right? So it's not an even number. It's an odd number because you had that one extra day. So 
365 times four is 1460, but you have that extra one day added. And so what's, what's been happening this week, I think relates directly to what we were studying back in 2018. And one of the things is we have a Thanksgiving day prediction as well this year, right? That is the November 24th date, 2022. So, which is today, right? So happy Thanksgiving for Americans, by the way. Um, so so we're, we're gonna look at some of these things, I guess, later after we look at these charts. But the main thing here is that Parminder had disregarded Rome establishing the vision, right? Exactly. Right. So, so we can see here that this is a confirmation of our message and it comes at the right time. So Stephen put this on uh, yesterday, which is the day before Thanksgiving. And, and the day before Thanksgiving, we made our prediction in 2018. So back then it was November 21st. Now, now it, it started sort of a few days before that because you know it took time, but we, we met together on the day before Thanksgiving, correct, Heidi? That we met together with people and had the study and came up with how to understand this prediction. And that was, um, I guess we found it later against the wishes of FFA, though at the time they said, just go find someplace else to study it. You can't study it, it here. It was kind of strange because Larry Hine was- Larry Hine was there. He was there, but I think he was... He was there as a spy probably more than anything, yeah, which we didn't so realize. So so Larry Hine was opposed to this Thanksgiving Day prediction so before he... he tended to be in favor of it when he came to the meeting. Right. So this is one of the things <clears throat> regarding what happened um, in 2021 with, that Dwight experienced regarding this Thanksgiving Day prediction. So one is they completely misunderstood the purpose of the prediction because the purpose of the prediction was not to predict an event, but was we, we took it as something that God had given us to see whether we could predict events. And it was pretty clear that we couldn't. We could look at them afterward and see what they meant, but we couldn't understand what these future dates meant before they occurred. We could just see that they were part of a structure. And, and so this has been used against, um, was used against us, um, in that declaration that was part of the whole thing this thanksgiving day prediction but and we we had no idea we couldn't understand back in 2018 what they were reacting to we were trying to understand why they were so resistant to studying uh the civil war and trying to figure out what it was we were seeing and we've seen that same sort of resistance to studying things out well, they were misrepresenting us yeah so, so, so all of these things that, that, that we see here in this chart, they relate to um, all of the things that have been happening in this movement, especially at the timing of this chart coming out. A any thoughts on that? Anything that people could add? Well, you know, we, we were addressing a little bit of this yesterday because one of the one of the comments that that Iran had made was the fact that this chart was sent and re well was received by him at 317 a.m. mountain time yesterday. Yeah, which would be my time. Yeah, right. So 317 um which of course is 31 seven. So that's the 31 times seven symbol. Exactly. Yeah, but, so the timing of things, the timing of things becomes important here. But the, the, the point that I took from that was that this was a confirmation of the validity of so many of the things that have been, that you especially have been presenting over the last several years. Now, what Stephen has done here is a lot of work. 
and mm -hmm. it ties so many things together. And, and lots of things that Stephen didn't see too. So that's the neat thing about it is we, we, you didn't, you know, he didn't see the other 126 years. Um, but there, there are other things in here that, uh, so once we start looking at something, then we, yeah, so 2.17 a.m. for Iran, which is the number 2.17, and, th and 3.17 for me, which is 31 times 7, right, which is 2.17. So that's actually one of those little, little tight little um, patterns. Right. So <clears throat> just reading uh, the chat from... From Iran. So, I mean, we kind of need to put this together. Like I know you did with your email, but we, we need to put all of these things together in, in just, just in a document with the diagrams more completed. Well, th this is why what I said at the outset, if we deconstruct this mm -hmm. so that we're showing the periods of say the 91 years. Yeah. And then <clears throat> But see, taking this this structure where we're we're using 457 and 408, the midpoint being 191, mm -hmm. and then having the the 91 year periods because they establish two very correct way marks. Yeah. Then having the 126 year periods because they again establish very correct symbols and way marks mm -hmm. we are then able to look at this in a manner where we wind up with a structure that we're going to be able to use when we go further into our discussion regarding what we're seeing in the book of judges yes now so the the other point too um because and we talked about this of course but the 217 the 217 bc is the battle of of raffia which is on june 22nd uh 217 right. c and and of course this relates directly to um um the prediction regarding November 9th, 2019, that Tess and Parminder made. But it, it ties also beautifully into this because, as we were just addressing, yeah. 31 times 7 is 217. Right. Now, see, I'd figured this out. This structure you see here, um, I'd already figured out when I analyzed the 70 weeks back in 2014. So I had the 191 BC as the center of this structure because I was doing presentations showing that the week of Christ uh, that we see here, um, that the week of Christ is a seven-year period divided by 31 AD, right? So I was showing that 31 AD was not an arbitrary date. Right. Right. And, and because I'd, I'd studied the prophetic mirror and understood the symbolic nature of this period of time, that this was producing the entire prophetic mirror, right? That, that, and this was hidden on the 1863 chart. So, so then I noted that this 62 weeks is, div is divided by 31, so that this period of the 62 weeks is 2 times 31, right, where the week itself, the week of Christ, is one week divided by 31. Does that make sense? So the 31 times 7, I'd connected to this 31 times 7 years. All right. Right, dividing this. So, so I saw that the 62 weeks itself was not an arbitrary period of time. Now, I'd also noted back then that this is seven weeks, seven times seven. And if I take the last week, I get 343. And then if I added that to 434, I would get 777. So this I noted back in 2014, right? In my analysis of the 70 weeks. And um, 
I presented this not in that much detail, but I presented this in 2014 in Arkansas in October at the camp meeting. So the first time I presented in the U.S. Um, was in 2014 as well. And, and so I was presenting some of these structures. But these were pretty much ignored by the vast majority of people in the movement. Um, people didn't like this. People walked out of the meetings I was doing in Arkansas, saying this is a waste of their time. And But Jeff always accepted these things. He said he didn't fully understand them, but he knew that they were true. Right? And uh, that's why he had me speaking there in 2014. He'd heard me in Alberta presenting my, I did, I think it was an eight-part series on uh, these structures that I had found um, earlier that year. So I'd had about a three-month period where all I could do was draw on the whiteboard and uh, think numbers all the time, even though I worked a bit, but mostly that's what I was doing. So... So all of these structures have been found before, but what we're seeing now is the significance of these structures as it relates to the present situation in the movement. Right? So, so God has been leading this movement to this point, if we want to put it that way, um, to understand something. And so we need to pay attention to what it is he's trying to instruct us in. Because we have so many things tied, so many lines tied to the present period of time. The point to, to support what you were just saying, mm -hmm. there are those that do not wish to go into a deeper study of of any of the lines because they do do not wish to involve chronology and they don't wish to tax themselves to press their abilities to look to understand these things these morning meetings these times that we have gotten together in other studies i mean all of them have been of a benefit to help us understand what is presented within scripture in such a way so that we are applying history, Miller's rules, and the spirit of prophecy so that we can have a much clearer understanding of what God would say to us at this time. All of these things are being done as preparatory work. Mm -hmm. All of this preparatory work is done so that we may clearly understand the message that we're going to be required to give first to those within the corporate church and then to be able to answer the question to those outside of the corporate church that are going to have questions when the majority of the corporate church rejects the message. Yeah, well, I mean, so God is leading us to something, right? And, and, um, and that's pretty clear. So we're going to be looking at a few more of these things. So I know it's, chronology isn't the most enjoyable thing, you know, numbers and, all these dates and everything to try to remember for people speak for yourself uh, will you like this <laughs> <laughs> numbers fascinate me especially with the interrelationship with history yeah I'm, i mean i've always been fascinated with numbers but not everybody is so i know when i first presented the chronology stuff in 2014 in alberta i mean i'd written really good notes um and I had all these different things that I wanted people to look at. And, and people felt like they were in, in school again in a math class, which I guess for many people was a traumatic experience. So, so it wasn't really well received, even in Alberta. Um, but definitely it, 
it wasn't well received except from some people in Brazil who happened to be at the camp from Brazil who happened to be at the camp meeting in 2014 in Arkansas. So they were they saw it as something helpful to deal with some of the opposition to the 2520. So that part they saw. But it's it's been um, you know for you know to try to understand why God has given us this. My my I mean God the Palmoni obviously that's something that's been a part of this movement uh, for a long long time. Um, but yeah, it's it's not something that we can just uh, you know we we can't take lightly. I mean, these are not something that was just created by a single person. I mean, this is this is part of the Bible. All of these, all of these dates, all of this history, and it's a part of our present experience. So we we have to take this as coming from God. Now, um, after October twenty second, eighteen forty four. We know that there were two groups that were established. There was one group that went off and did not choose to study. They just chose that, well, we're just we're going to have to look that our predictions were wrong. And the other group that continued to study did so collaboratively, where many people contributed to come to an understanding of what they were finding within scripture. Yeah. We are in a, sim in a very similar situation right now. We have two groups that have become fairly firmly established since July 18th. One yeah. group is convinced that while July 18th was valid, that the use of numbers and chronology were a mistake. Therefore, anything else that's come from this should be set aside. Okay. They're not providing any kind of additional evidence of further study. Here we are meeting to, together now, putting together a very public and publicly available study so that anyone that is of interest can then go back and look at what is being said and look at what's being developed. And they can weigh for themselves the validity of what's being determined. Okay. So the admonition that we find in Revelation 2 and 3 becomes incumbent upon us at this time he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches okay yeah so so there's a number of things okay there's all kinds of points here um I'm just doing some things here. Sorry about that. Now, um, here so and anything else about this chart itself because Stephen had added some things was there things that you could add to this Stephen about Dwight's um, observations because you said you sent an email or was it you who sent yeah so just um, I just uh, added what Dwight had mentioned in his email Okay, you added that to the diagram? Yes. You didn't put, post the diagram, though. Did I not? Yeah. 
So you said, because on WhatsApp, or did you send it in an email? Email? Okay, in an email, which you probably sent to Dwight, but you did not send it to me. All right, okay, maybe that. I uh, Maybe I just, yeah. Uh... Okay. If you can send it to me, I can put that up and we can look at that with that additional information. And this was this was the other chart that you had posted yesterday, which which I still think there's things that we're missing in this chart and what it means. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to bring up. Uh, so that that's that sent. Okay, good. So so yeah. So I'll look at this here. Uh, download this. And open it up, and then bring this one up. Um, oddly, when you. This chart here is in reverse colors for some reason. I don't know why that is. I don't know why that happens sometimes. I'll do it this way. This way you can see it properly. Okay, so here is the chart that you updated. So just so people can see this. And, and maybe, uh, can you send the chart through the chat? or not uh-huh yes yeah so so we just have this um 3 31 17 bc right so that that becomes really really clear as a symbol and that's going to be ptolemy soder marrying berenice and then you have um the 13 times 7 on the one side and then the 126 years on the other side, right? So you can see the, the the analysis of that. And then, of course, we know that this 31 times 7 is 217 years, which is a symbol of midnight, the 21st of July, and also a symbol of raffia. So, so we have these different symbols that are here. Um, so I want to go to this other chart. So this is one we looked at before and we were talking about before the study today. Because today is November 24th, 2022. So it's Thanksgiving in the United States. And four years prior, we had made a prediction regarding Thanksgiving. So that's... Uh, Four years is 1,461 days. Now, just, I mean, there's a lot of information on this chart, like all of them. But what had happened is um, November 24th, this came up about as a result of analyzing this number 1629 from Odilia. So the 1629 has lots of characteristics. There's things that can be added or subtracted to it that are normal symbols. So it's not just a, a normal number. It's a number that ties together many of the symbols of this movement relating to um, the 391 and July 18th and et cetera, right? So I'm not going to go into all the details of 1629. But I counted 1,629 days, and it brought me back to June 9th, 2018, and June 9th, 2018, that is when we mark the beginning of time setting in this movement, being accepted, right? And that's going to be um, the 126 days that go to October 13th, 2018. So ties all into this history. Now, um, so we have that date, June 9th, 9th 2018. 
Now, the other thing that I noticed is if I went from November 24th back with this other symbol of Islam, and the reason why is November 24th is 11 times 24. So that's going to be that number that's related to uh, the 26th day of the fourth month. Right? So, so if I take that symbol, this is the number of days that the Islamic ta calendar takes to come around again to Ramadan. Um, and if I count back from November 24th to 2022, from today, it brings us to April 26, 1990. And April 26th is the 26th day of the fourth month. It happens to be 168 days from November 9th, 1989, when the time of the end begins. And 168 is a symbol of a week, because that's how many hours are in a week. And um, other things that I noticed, too, is from November 24th, if I went back to July 18th, it was 859 days. And that in base eight, in an octal, is 1533, another symbol uh, that relates to this movement, because that relates to the 153 days of Samuel Snow's letters. And it relates to this wonderful manifestation of the power of God from August 11th, 1840 to October 22, 1844, relates back to uh, the year of the Exodus. And so, I mean, there's almost too much really to look at in this chart. The main point is that we have this November 24th date. And, um, and it connects back to November 9th with the 111 days. Uh, and from... November 9th um, uh, to June 9th, 2018 was 518 days, which in reverse is August 15th. November 9th, of course, is to 252. And then from April 26th to June 9th, 2018 is 10,271 days, which is the 260th prime number. And and then we also have this period from November 24th to April 5th, 2030. So this is about Jotham. This is about the 70th week. The 70th week points to April 5th, 2030. And I noticed this back in 2018 because this is the first day of the first month. And, you know, we've gone through that study. Now, the number of exclusive days between the end of November 24th, 2022 to the beginning of April 5th, 2030 is... 2,688 days, which is 16 times 168. And this number uh, is, is, is interesting in what we found about this number today. So one of the things is the octal is 5,200, which is a symbol of July 18, 2020, because 52 times 360 is 18720. It's also the duodecimal is 1680, um, and also this is, this number, as we noted before, is 168 times 16. Now, what we had done, um, is, uh, well, Iran had done, so I'm going to bring this up here. So I know this is, this seems kind of odd, but he just typed in the number 268. And what he got uh, was a form, um, an application for additional extension of time to file the US individual income tax return. So would we look at, there, there, there's an extension of time for this movement to April 5th, 2030 to accomplish its task that that 2,688 days, um, that's what it is. God is giving us extra time. Would that be reasonable? Now this form, 2688, and I'll show you a picture of it. Um, this would look to be a logical point. Yeah. So this form looks like this. Um, now this is one from 2004. Uh, the one that Iran first found was from 1997. But this form has been in existence since 1996, according to this 
search result here. And um, this, this was accessed July 7th, 2003. July 7 is the seventh day of the seventh month. And you can see here that this form has been in, in existence since 1996 is when they first, it's based on the 1996 title from title screen viewed on July 7th, 2003. And the one that they had issued or, or, or consulted was the 2002 one. When they when they looked at it, so so it's fairly interesting. The mode of access you can see here the seven. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty tiny. So let's uh, bring this up bigger. So you can see here we got this. Uh, and, and if I click on this, it will just bring up this form from two thousand four, right? So that's the link. Um, to the 2004 one, you can see the July 7, 2003, and this 1996 with the dash. Description based on 1996, title from title screen, viewed on July 7, 2003. And then you can see uh, down here, where is it? Uh, right here, to July 7, 2003. Okay. And um, the 1996, of course, we know what, what is that date in this movement. We normally mark it. Yeah, the, the, the publication of the Time of the End magazine, marking the formalization of this message. Right? Yes. Ninja's message. So so this is pretty interesting. It's 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 an American Internal Revenue Service uh, document and it just is additional extension of time. And and we can believe uh, it's also the formalization of FFA, Fox, CNN, and EWTN. So so we have this this form that comes into existence in 1996. It has to do with the additional uh, an application for the additional extension of time, and and it seems that that's what this movement has right now. On this fourth fourth anniversary of Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving Day prediction. I was going to say also, I think it more relates to um, individual because it's an individual form, so. It's giving individuals more time. Okay. And that that's, yeah. So as individuals, we have this time being given to us. And, and we're making an application for it, in a sense, in this movement presently. Yes. So, so I think this, this is all reasonable, that God is giving us this. I mean, to somebody from the outside looking at it, it seemed kind of crazy. Um, you know, how we're looking at, at these events. But we know that this is founded not upon, um, you know, us just looking at the numbers and events presently, that this is founded upon the past, that we have been given these, these dates in our lines to tell us information, to help us in making a decision. Now, um, the other thing that's happened, and I'm, I'm not going to show the email just because it would show information on there on the on the screen, but I can just refer to it. So um, we, we got an email, as we do every week, from Three Angels Messages Fellowship. Now, I had marked back in 2016 of this year that it was the first time they stopped including uh, – uh, that they, they discontinued including information for yeah February 16th, 2022, that they, they would not include my um, information for my Zoom link. So they used to include that in their, their messages, and they ceased that on February 16th, 2022. Now, yesterday, so on the 23rd at 6, uh, 6.44 p.m., I got an email from them, so that was 13 hours ago, uh, it says on my email thing, um, 
And in this email, um, they are now having songs at sunset beginning tomorrow at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That might not be conflicting with our studies on Friday night, but it might in that they probably will continue going on. They might not. They might stop. But uh, the other thing that's quite interesting is they've added for quite a while, please ensure your respect to this request of not recording the meetings unless you get permission from the Zoom host. And for the first time, they've actually bolded this in yellow. So I don't know what that means, but that technically, if we look at the biblical start of the date, that's on November 24th that this email is sent to me. Now it's technically on our calendar, November 23rd, but November 24th because it's a couple hours after sunset that they sent this email out. Um, and of course, they're, um, Colin is always noting that the day begins at sunset. So he always refers to that, you know, that this is already this new day um, once, we, once the sun sets. Um, so, so I think it's significant as far as this movement is concerned that this November 24th date, we didn't know what it means, but can we say it at least it means that this is an extension of time for this movement? pointing to April 5th, 2030. Can we say that? Or are we reading into things? It almost looks like that, that the, the weight of evidence would point toward it. Yeah, and, and Eldon notes that this is for individuals. So this is an individual application that each of us need to make. Right. Okay. So, um, so, you know, we're in this situation where this movement is trying to decide how we proceed. And my view is that we always proceed as individuals. This is about individual repentance. And this downfall of Abimelech, then, if we try to address this now. Um, um, so we're coming back to, to, to our study here in Judges chapter 9, after basically an hour and 10 minutes of discussing um, these charts. And we, we had addressed this period of three years when Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel. So Abimelech is this message. How, how, would we, how are we characterizing Abimelech? It's a message. And what specifically is that message? It, it's a rejection of, of what? with the death of the 70, killing the 70 sons of Gideon. And how does this message reign for three years? Well, this other message, Jotham uh, flees to beer. So how, how are we characterizing that? Just if somebody could... Weren't we placing this with Jotham as being our need for further study? Right. And so that's 921. So that's December 26th, 2021. Okay. So that's the 20th, 21st day of the ninth month on the biblical calendar. Right. We began these studies then. So these studies has to do with a deeper insight into chronology. So we would have, would we place those three years as being the 21st day of the ninth month, as we're saying in, in 2021, Yeah. then 2022 with its culmination in 2023? Right. So, the, so the, we tie it up two ways. The three right. days 
20th day of the ninth month, which preceded December 25th, 2021, right? And, and we took those three days as being November 9th, 2019, uh, July 18, 2020, and the third day being December 25th, 2021. Mm -hmm. But we also take these three years as literally the three years um, from December 25th, 2021 to uh, 2023. So we still have this period of time that it's going to extend to 2023. And that's when... Uh, we're saying that the divorcing of the strange wives begins. The I'm just about to ask that. Yeah. So, so how that how that exactly happens and how this date, if whether we take it some literally something's going to happen on that date. I mean, we can definitely see that something has literally happened on this date internally within this movement, and from two different places. One is from uh, the publication of that chart that Stephen made um, on the 23rd, so the day before Thanksgiving, which would relate to what happened 1,400, uh, well, it's not to 1,461 days, but it's four years symbolically um, from the Thanksgiving day prediction that Heidi and I were involved in. And then also this email again, marking something, some change in the movement. Right. Right. So so we can see that it's internal. We weren't looking for some external event. We were just knowing that there would be something internal. And and these internal events always relate to uh, the understanding of the message. That is an increase of light for this message. That is light for our feet so that we can walk further along the path. Right. So as we move forward, we get this light for our feet. God isn't showing us, you know, everything along the path. But we do see in the distance this April 5th, 2030 date, whatever that means, right? Again, not a prediction of some event on that date, but it is a date that's been pointed out in multiple ways. 2,300 lunar months from April 19th, the first day of the first month in 1844, brings us to that date, April 5th, 2030. It's also 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months brings us to that date. And, and other things that we saw, right, that bring us to that date. So we can't just dismiss it, and we would have to see it as an application for an extension of time that's been given us. Because we believe that events were going to happen here in connection with 2020, 2021, 2022. And, and people are looking for a Sunday law to immediately come. And one thing we know is we haven't done our job. So all of these things are pointing to this. We, we can't, and we can see that they're founded upon the prophecies of the past. And that they undermine the prophecies and the predictions and the methodology of Parminder. It shows that Parminder was an error, but also that Parminder still, his, his spirit still pervades many people, per pervades this movement, controls many people in this movement. Now that evil spirit, as it's talked about in 923, um, that God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And so we had discussed who the men of Shechem were. This had to do with the covenant that was made. And this is now a false covenant made with Parminder, right? So it's a message that's based upon the message of Parminder. It's this false covenant. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. So this message now of Abimelech is going to be opposed by another message. So there's going to be a conflict that occurs. Now, part of the way that I see this, and this, this is just me thinking, so you could disagree with me or have observations, but when we see a spirit of criticism that exists, 
and people are in a group that is criticizing other groups, what always happens over time? What happens with that spirit of criticism? Where does it become directed? The spirit of criticism is usually directed at other people, not at the source. But it starts to become an internal conflict as well, correct? Hugely. Yes. Hugely. Yeah. So you start to see a division exist. Now, we know ex a division exists not just between us and the American Canadian groups or people in those groups, but that there are divisions that exist within those groups themselves. That is, there are still people who were not happy with Colin's prediction who are part of those groups. They often remain quiet. They're not going to be openly uh, speaking, but we do know that they, they, that they are not completely thrilled with Colin's uh, prediction. Um, they, because many of them, for one, see the chronology that Colin is using and the chronology that Odilio was using as something they don't want to have any part in, right? So that still exists within the movement. So we could expect, as Colin's prediction fails, that this riff will continue within the movement, even though Colin might be digging himself in and saying, you know, we just need to wait and see what's going to happen. There are people who are already unhappy with Colin's prediction failing. Is that a reasonable observation to see that that would happen within this, this these groups? But it's inevitable. Exactly when it's going to happen, I don't know. But would we see that as inevitable? It's a logical conclusion. I mean, I've seen it happen hundreds of times. And, and I don't know if that's even an exaggeration. Um, I've seen it happen so many times personally of people who split off from some other group or critical of it, who eventually turn against those that are part of their group. I, I mean, this is this is a history of 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 offshoots, you know, people. People come, become dissatisfied with their church. They start some new movement, and that movement quickly becomes divided over some other minor point. And those groups then grow a little bit, and they again have another division. And, and you can see this in the history of Christianity and of all these different groups that exist. I mean, as I'm studying about uh, right now about these different groups and uh, in their relationship to the understanding of Leviticus 23 um, as the morrow after the Sabbath, you can see all of these groups infighting. I mean, that's all you find on the internet in this the discussion regarding Leviticus 23 is groups fighting amongst themselves over how to interpret that verse. Um, and these groups had already split off from other groups previously. So, um, so this is what happens. And this is what is not supposed to happen for us, right? Because we're supposed to come to the upper room. We don't see a schism amongst the disciples other than Judas, right? In the end. In the end, correct. Yeah. But the disciples fought amongst themselves and uh, for supremacy, for control, leadership, whatever you want to call it. And, and thus we're criti critical of one, one another. Okay, so uh, Eldon notes that the, it only extends the time to file um, uh, not the time to pay taxes if owed. There will be penalties. This should show us that we cannot rest waiting for the extra time given. Okay, so interesting observation. <clears throat> Very much agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So a person can file later. Um, yeah, I, I don't understand much the American system of taxes because I know it's it's pretty strict, much different than in Canada. Uh, I mean, I know my dad didn't pay taxes for like 15 years and finally filed. And of course, there was penalties. 
but he didn't have to get an extension to to file. Uh, they just assumed, you know, he he wasn't filing. He probably wasn't making money. Um, and I did that, you know, before too. There's been a period of time where I didn't file. I think three years or something. Nobody contacted me or anything like that. It just once I did file, there were penalties uh, for filing late. Um, but anyway, um, so we have this, this downfall of Abimelech. And, and this is going to be rather involved. So, I mean, we're, this is what we're going to be looking at in more detail, detail next week. But, it, but it's not a simple story. And, and we don't really know what it means yet. Um, because we went through it before and we had some sketchy ideas, but I think now we have actually a better way to interpret what, what's going to be happening. Now we know here, it says that then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. So this message is going to then be opposed and, and it uses the word treacherously um now the hebrew word itself um well, just hang on my computers for some reason esword works really slowly here i'll look at the king james here uh this word treacherously bagad uh, means uh faithlessly deceitfully now now that doesn't really bode well for people in this movement um, and we saw that really, in a sense, uh, the message of, of Gideon was also dealt with treacherously, right? That is, deceit has always been the result of those who reject truth. But even here, deceit can be, the re can be used against a false message as well. So why is, why is this, why is it, does it deal treacherously with Abimelech, with this message? Why is, it, why is uh, the message going to be misrepresented when it's attacked? What's, what's the principle involved? The men of Shechem were the first and foremost ones at supporting Abimelech. Yeah. And after a period of time, they became disgusted with the cruelty that Abimelech was showing. Yeah, but wasn't Abimelech also being deceitful? Yeah. So, so he basically, you know, gets back what he had done, right? So one of the things we have to be careful about, you know, when we criticize people, um, now it doesn't mean that we're not going to be criticized just because we don't criticize others, but, what, what we do, we will experience, right? We, we, right? we somehow think that we're immune to, you know, that we can use deceit against others. We can work behind the scenes and try to undermine another person as if that's not going to happen to us. Right? But, but it does, right? So you sort of get what you've given. Right. Now, and it says here, though, that this happens, that the cruelty done to the three score and ten sons of Jeroboam might come and their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in killing the killing of his brethren. So this is basically a divine payback. Would we take it as that? I would have to agree. This is cause and effect. Very much. Yeah. <clears throat> so the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him in the top of the mountains, and they robbed all that came along that way by them, and it was told of Bimelech. So I don't know what this is, is going to mean exactly, um, so we have a message, which is the men of Shechem. Um, 
And this is just a message that th this is based upon this covenant, this false covenant. So it's going to set liars in wait on the top of the mountains. And it's going to rob people that come along the way. And this is going to be told to Bimelech, right? So now it says there lies in wait for him. Um, I'm not sure if that's even a correct translation, but uh, what that particularly means, it, it seems like when you're reading it, that it's that they're waiting for him so that they could be assassins, right? But he doesn't come along the way. But when other people come along the way, they're going to be robbed. Is that is that how people read this? I'd have to look at that a little closer. Yeah. I mean, it's just, um, you know, it says here in uh, Young's Literal, for the coming, um, for the masters of Shechem set for him ambushes on the top of the hills and rob everyone who passes over them by the way. And it is declared to Abimelech. Um, so whether that's, the correct way or not. So it looks like they want to ambush him according to these different translations. I'm just going to look in here, Hebrew. Yeah, it looks like that's probably correct. Tops of the mountains. Yeah. Um, anyway. I'm, I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more. So it, it seems like they want to ambush... Um, Abimelech, but he just doesn't come there. So that, I think that's what it is. And then it says this, the Gaal, the son of Ebed, came with his brethren and went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. So so this is talking about a another message that's going to be um that, that the men of Shechem are going to be trusting in. So this would still be something future in how we understand this, correct? It could be. Now, the word ga'al means loathing, and you, and you can see that it's it's a very um, onomatopoeic word. It's a very uh, visceral word, because you can just p picture that word as somebody expressing loathing with, with their voice ha ah, right it, and, right. and in Hebrew it's even more clear because uh, uh because of the, the way those consonants are pronounced and so it's it's a, a gimel uh an ein and a lamet so it's 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 just an expression of loathing like gagging is basically what it means um so he's the son of Ebed, and Ebed is um, a servant, right? That's what Ebed means. So, so this loathing is the son of a serv of the son of a servant, and that's his dad's name. But still, that's the name Ed Ebed means servant with his brethren and went over to Shechem and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. Now it says they went out into the fields and gathered their vineyards and trode their grapes. And so we're going to have to look at what this means uh, when we come together to study this on Sunday, but that's where we are at. We're going to start looking at this story. Any final comments before we close with prayer? Not right now. Okay. Okay. Well, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful again 
though we have a heart burden for others, we know, Lord, that um, there are many precious souls who are struggling at this time and whose um, lives are in jeopardy spiritually. We just pray, Lord, that you can use us uh, to minister to others. We do not know how to address what's happening other than to trust in you. We don't know how we are to relate to others who um, differ from us other than to follow the counsels in your word and to trust that you can work things out. We can see clearly that you are leading this movement and that the events that are happening have been foreseen by you and guided by your hand. And they are for our correction. So we pray, Lord, that we can be corrected. We ask for your angels' care and protection until we meet again. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.